Hi everyone, I hope you've had a great TLA conference so far. My name is Daniel and I want to briefly tell you about one of our attempts at tackling state space explosion in TLA plus visualizations. Also, sorry I can't be there in person. I still hope that you will enjoy our presentation. So let's get started. State diagrams are one of the most well-known and beloved diagrams in computer science. Because we usually model state machines in TLA, state diagrams are the natural way to explore the state space. In theory, that is. As most of you will know, the state space of even tiny TLA specs can become quite enormous. Consider the classic two-phase commit protocol, which most of you should be familiar with. We chose this spec as a running example for the whole presentation and so assume that you are familiar with it. Here's the summary. The protocol we want to achieve a distributed consensus by having a transaction manager coordinate multiple resource managers. The transaction manager sends out a message to the resource managers and they respond with a prepared message. If all resource managers are prepared, the transaction manager sends out a commit message to all resource managers. If you visualize the state space with one resource manager, you get this pretty diagram with 30 distinct states. Now, the two-phase commit protocol really only makes sense with more than one resource manager. If we use three resource managers, however, the state diagram becomes unworkable with about uh, 1,400 distinct states. We wanted to explore if there's anything we can do about that. Let's start by acknowledging that TLA Plus's niche are distributed systems. It's where it receives most of the attention and arguably also where it's most commonly used. Now, what are distributed systems? I know this might upset some of you, but one way of looking at distributed systems is from the lens of the actor model. Let's try to stick with this model and see if there are any benefits from thinking about distributed systems like that. Assuming this equation, we might wonder who the actors in a TLA plus spec are. In the two actions from the two-phase commit protocol, you can see here who are our actors. The mathematical notation makes it really hard to clearly distinguish them. This is mostly because TLA variables are global and thus, in theory, there are no boundaries to accessing variables. This is what makes TLA plus unique and some would argue better than the other specification languages. Just because there are no specific, specific language constructs for working with actors doesn't mean that they are not there. We still model them. Even though variables are global, some actions only change specific variable scopes which belong to their conceptual actor. In fact, this is done quite explicitly in the two-phase commit protocol. If we just read the comments, we could think this actor model of thinking about distributed systems exists in TLA specs too. It's the transaction manager doing something or the resource manager. In fact, the actors in this protocol are quite obvious. They are the transaction manager TM and our resource managers. Let's briefly jump back to state diagram, to our state diagram. If we look at a few transitions of state in detail, we see that our state diagram, similar to our TLA syntax, does not differentiate between actors. Instead, each state shows all transitions for all conceptual actors. From our initial state, we can toggle the arm prepare action to let a resource manager prepare and TM aboard to let the transaction manager do something. This is truthful to the way TLA plus notation works and necessary to explore all actual states. On our quest to tackling state explosion, however, this could be a way to reduce the complexity of the state diagram. What if we only showed the transitions and variables of one actor at a time? If we did this, we could transform our state diagrams, which we can see here, to something like this. What we can see here is coming directly from the same state space, but we only looked at states and state transitions that conceptually belong to an actor. If you look at the actor state diagram of RM1, it's actually 
this actually looks very familiar because it looks just like the state diagram you would see in written explanations of the two-phase commit protocol. This is reassuring because it gives quick confidence in the correctness of the specification. The best thing, of course, is that the state diagram of ARM1 is quite small, making it very easy to get an overview of all possible states. This is particularly easy here because the state of the resource manager is equivalent to the state of ARM state of ARM1. The transitions show all the actions that change ARM state of ARM1. Now, we think that this is pretty neat, but of course it comes with some limitations. First, actions can have side effects. Pretty much all of the actions in this state diagram interact with the messages variable, because this is how we model our messages. These side effects aren't obvious, especially compared to the complete state diagram we have seen before. Somewhat similar is the second drawback. Transitions might seem like they are always possible. This would be the intuitive interpretation of state diagrams, but here some are only possible when specific conditions are met, which are not directly deducible from this diagram. Rather, the transitions must be interpreted as theoretically possible transitions. The resource manager, as modeled in this protocol, is really the prime example of this approach. The transaction manager state sadly is somewhat more complex. It's definitely still readable with a mere 17 distinct states though. For the transaction manager, the relevant variable scopes are easily spotted too, because it just consists of the variables tm state and tm prepared, conveniently already named after the actor. When looking at the individual states, we can see that tm state only consists of init, aborted, or committed values, which we could also simply verify in the type correctness invariant of the spec. What's really causing the relatively higher amount of states is tm prepared, simply because there are already so many possible variations of preparedness with only three resource managers. And because we noticed that Started the starting of the state explosion, even in this smaller case, it comes to little surprise that we didn't solve our state explosion problem quite yet. On the right, we can see the actor state space of the transaction manager. The total state space consists of over 50,000 distinct states, whereas the actor state space of TM consists of 129. In comparison, Everyone would probably prefer the 129, but really 129 makes for a messy state diagram too. With this simple approach, we can solve our state explosion problem. There's one more thing we can do though. When researching this topic, we found two researchers working on the same problem with the B language family. When reading the paper, we noticed that our precious actor metaphor was just a special case of projecting state spaces. Now, the actor metaphor is really close to TLA Plus's niche, so it still provides a unique and straightforward way of projecting state spaces onto manageable units that match the conceptual ideas behind many TLA Plus specs. But we can go a step further and not only filter for specific variables, but also, for example, aggregate them. And if we do this for our transaction manager, TM, we actually get nice state diagrams that are small and scale linearly. We have the same total space left and right. On the left, we only used our actor metaphor to project onto the variables TM state and TM prepared. We saw that there are too many, mostly uninteresting variations of TM prepared, however. Our main concern with the two-phase commit protocol is not what resource managers exactly are prepared, but that we can only commit once all of them are prepared. So instead of showing all of these variations, we can just project TM prepared to its cardinality. If we look at this in detail, we see that we lose some and gain some. What we lose is that some of the transitions lose some of their information power. For example, uh, we can see that TM receive prepared of IM1 is shown between all of those states. It obviously makes sense if we think why that is, but it definitely could mislead into believing that TM receive prepared of the same resource manager triggered X times would actually increase the size of TM prepared equally. We gain a lot too, though. 
The biggest win in this situation, of course, is that the projected state diagram is actually workable. And it scales fantastically in a linear fashion. In fact, if there's a good projection, it basically solves our state explosion because suddenly we don't have an exponential growth, but something like a linear one. What might be even more important though, is that this representation has an incredible nose to signal ratio because we can very clearly see what matters and what the key actions are. Namely, that our transaction receives prepared messages that it can abort any time, and we can only commit once all resource managers have prepared. We hope this excites you as much as, much as it excites us. All right, you probably want to know how difficult it is to do that by now. Luckily, it's actually quite simple. You can see a sketch of the algorithm here. Basically, we need some representation of the state space and our projection functions of those states uh, onto anything we can compare for equality. In the algorithm, we first initialize separate graphs for each actor. Then we iterate over all transitions, use our projection functions on the state before and after, and check if they differ. If they do, we remember that transition as changing the corresponding actor and save both the transition and our projected states to the respective graph. And that's about it. The algorithm, algorithm really is quite simple. Still, there are some limitations which we should be aware of. The obvious current, current practical limitation why you can't simply go ahead and try this out yourself is that there's some additional input needed to create the projected diagrams. Namely, we need to provide the projection functions somehow. We think that there are two principal ways of providing these functions. Either we could provide them directly in the spec or we could provide them externally. Providing them directly in the spec could look something like the already existing alias functionality used for exporting traces or building animations. The nice thing about this option would be that the TLA plus spec would be all that is needed to go from the spec to projected diagrams. This would come at a cost though. Writing the projection functions should probably be ideally an iterative approach. Spec writers should be able to easily experiment with different projections and see if they match their expectation and are accessible. When projecting during model checking, we would need to run the whole model checking process every time we want to change the projections. To solve that, we could export the state space into a format that easily uh, allows accessing of the variables. Something like JSON would suffice. Then we would decouple building the state space and visualizing it. Because building the state space is what takes most of the time, it would be much faster and simpler to work with the state dump. Then again, all visualization tools would then require some additional way of defining projection functions. Also, JSON is probably not the most resource saving format, so we could end up with state dumps that can potentially have gigabytes of data. When we experimented with this, we went for the second option. Of course, we were somewhat biased because implementing such functionality in TLC seemed non-trivial. Yet it was extremely easy to export the state dump as JSON because most of the work was already done on that end. And because we were familiar with JavaScript and JSON, that played to our strengths. Lastly, we generally prefer high interactiveness because we believe that makes for a better usability. Certainly, this doesn't mean that this is the right approach. Yeah, there are two other minor limitations though. One is that the algorithm doesn't ignore, uh, that the algorithm does ignore stuttering steps. I believe this could be fairly easily solved by using another traversal algorithm, but for our purposes, that was sufficient. And then there are scalability concerns. Importing JSON works just fine and fast up until 50 megabytes. After that, at least browsers start to complain and one would probably need something like a stream reader for the data. As for the first option, it could pollute the spec somewhat because for our two-phase commit protocol with six resource managers, for example, we would need already seven projection functions, which uh, might um, doesn't look that nice. So that's pretty much all we wanted to tell you for now. To quickly summarize, using our actor metaphor and the general idea of projecting state graphs, 
we can turn something like the above state diagram into something much more manageable, like the diagrams below. Of course, these are not isomorphic, but they still provide plenty of potential, potential to gain understanding, which is what state diagrams are there for. All right, that's it. Thanks a lot for your attention. I hope you enjoyed listening to me and that you find the topic as exciting as we did.